hello again YouTube and tonight I'm going to be reviewing this film here which is uh, Electric Light and Blue um, and giving you some of the sound points and um, re re review on it. It's, um, I'll read the back uh, which is um, the ultimate, notorious, rare, infamous, violent, infamously violent, action-packed, cult classic road movie is finally available on DVD. Along with Vanishing Point and Two Lane Blacktop, Electric Glide in Blue reflects a generation in turn moil and encapsulates the gritty, uncompromising, fiercely independent attitude of early 70s existential American cinema. With its sharp dialogue, Astounding cinematography, oddball characters, and deep-rooted sense of absurd, Electric Light in Blue is a unique and poignant unsung masterpiece. The first and only film directed by James William Grosico, Electric Light in Blue stars Robert Blake as a Vietnam uh, vet turned frustrated highway patrol traffic cop, John Wintergreen. Tired of handing out speeding tickets to spaced out hippies, John aspires to reach the ranks of detective. When the chance to prove his investigative skills arises, John is suddenly thrown into a world of corruption, lies, personal politics, eventually growing to despise the authoritative figures he once looked up to. It's a situation that concludes with one of the most shocking and ultimately tragic iconic images in modern cinema that will stay with you forever now as i said this to me this is a cult classic it's a great film definitely 10 out of 10 and worth watching so what, what are the selling points well first off it's part of a collection of um american highway type films you know um it's part of uh, e the series of films like easy rider Vanishing Point, Two Laid Blacktop, which are all great cult classics. The only difference is between this one and the uh, aforementioned films is it tells the story of the American highway not from an outlaw perspective, but from the police's perspective. Um, you know, it's um the, the part of the title comes from the um bikes that the Harley Davidson company were supplying to the American um highway patrol um police departments at the time which is the electric glide um which is what John Wintergreen and his partner uh both ride um beautiful beautiful bikes even though I'm not a big bike enthusiast um, I will say the bikes that they're riding, really beautiful. If you liked um, those films or if you liked um, uh, Chips, the, the TV series Chips, then you're probably going to like this. Um, and it is kind of a coming of age story uh, for the main character because you know the basic is the, it's kind of told in three stages, which is the stage one where he's, um, you know, wanting to be what he perceives to be better than what he already is. Um, stage two is when he gets that chance and he gets to wear the cowboy boots and the, the, the 10 gallon hat. Um, and stage three is when, for whatever reason, he goes back to being what he was previously, but now he has perspective that he, you know, that he doesn't want to be something else that he's happy being what he is um and he changes as a character you see him change as a character i won't spoil the ending for you because it has um a, a, an intriguing ending and it is very loosely based on real events um so yeah if you get a chance to watch this um you know there's some great cinematography scenes in it there's like uh some great chase scenes in it as you would expect with this type of film um because, as I said, part of the story is about finding this guy, you know, so there's, there's these chase scenes where they're chasing people down and stuff like this. And there's also some great dialogue. Um, one of my favourite dialogue scenes in it is when, uh, right at the beginning, he's having to go at this truck driver because he's driving a load that's too heavy down this particular highway. It's over the weight limit or something. 
and he's pulled him over for this and he's told him he's got to drive back up the road and drive down another route and it's going to delay this guy and the guy's like you know I've only been back six, you know six months or I've only just been back three months and I've lost this is going to be my fifth job I've lost and Wintergreen looks at him and goes you just got back from Vietnam and the guy's like yeah he's like I'm going to do for you one what it took a year for somebody to do for me when I got back from uh, Vietnam and the guy's like oh yeah really what's that and Don Wintergreen looks at him smiles and says absolutely nothing and carries him writing a ticket out you know it's I don't know whether I should use that as a great line from the film because there are other good lines in the film um it's also got a really cool soundtrack and the other thing as well is it's got some really great cinematography in it especially the outside shots which if you're a fan of westerns um then you're gonna really enjoy this with with the outside shots because the guy that they brought in to do the the cinematography, the camera shots and that, um, he'd he'd been working previously um, on a lot of western type films, and when the the people that were making the film, the director and the producer were making the film, one of the comments that was made about this was you know the the, the scene the uh, extras on the DVD was about how he didn't want to do any more of these, you know, wide, panoramic, um, open American road type shots that were, were, were are, are quite synonymous with um, the um, Western type films. And um, the, 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 the producer, the director at the time made this deal with him that if he did the, these shots that they hired him to do, which was these panoramic, uh, open landscape western type shots that he could do whatever he wanted with regards to the internal shots and there is some really 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 breathtakingly beautiful shots um, in this film with regards to the open road um, especially the end scene which again I won't spoil for you um, but again really worth watching if you get a chance um, and it's for me as a cult classic it's definitely 10 out of 10